Lately, I've been experimenting with oils on paper on an acrylic base color. Using a colored surface immediately creates unity in your painting. The color ties everything together. I chose light Vitalo blue, a soft blue color that fits perfectly with the hazy atmosphere of the painting I had in mind. I cut a thin strip of masking tape to mark the location of the horizon, because the sky will be mirrored in the water and the horizon is the axis of reflection, it's useful while painting to always be aware of where exactly the horizon is. The first coat of oil paint consists of indigo blue and scheveningen blue, supplemented with increasingly more titanium white. Further to the right I'm adding Naples yellow, because the light is coming in from the right. Naples yellow is a bit softer than the brilliant yellow I normally use. But because this is supposed to be a soft painting, I prefer Naples yellow. The usual suspects, the stipple brush, and the badger hair fan brush. Using my rag I draw the rough shape of the clouds in the still wet paint. With a mix of Naples yellow and titanium white, I not only capture the places where the light should fall, but I also define the darker shapes of the clouds in the foreground. The contrast between light and dark is essential in an image like this. It should certainly not be too dark to maintain the soft character, but if it's too light you get a pale, meaningless picture so it'll probably go back and forth between too light and too dark. I'll start by darkening the clouds in the foreground with a mix of violet grey, indigo blue and titanium white. Today I'll continue increasing the contrasts in the painting. I like to do that slowly, step by step, layer by layer, especially in a painting like this, where everything depends on subtle contrasts. This new layer consists of a mix of Naples yellow and Old Holland yellow light. The latter is a very light yellow, that I often use for the highlights in my clouds, but this time to soften the Naples yellow even more. There are two ways to define a shape. The first is to darken the shape compared to the background. 
The second, and that's what I'm doing here, is to lighten the background. Like I just said, in a misty painting like this, you have to be careful not to make certain areas too dark. The large cloud on the left should become the lightest. On the one hand, to suggest that it's illuminated by the veiled sunlight, and on the other, that it's further away than the clouds on the right. That's why I lighten its top with a mixture of violet grey, Naples yellow and a little titanium white. Here too, I'll slowly increase the contrast and gradually add some details. With a mix of brilliant yellow, titanium white and a little vermilion red, I'm doing the silver linings of the most distant clouds. Because they're hardly visible and don't stand out against the already light background, they increase the sense of a moist, hazy atmosphere. I'm going to darken the bottom left of the painting a bit, as a counterpart to the clouds at the top right. I'm using indigo blue from the German brand Lucas. It's a slightly more purple indigo than the Royal Talons indigo. I mixed it with a bit of umber green, which makes it a slightly softer color. I mix the paint with quite a lot of liquid, which makes it transparent and allows you to see the underlying blue layer through the fine texture of the stipple brush. The warm indigo provides a beautiful contrast with the cool blue. I'm extending the color below the horizon. The calm water is a perfect mirror for the sky. For the row of dunes on the right, I use the same color combination, so Lucas Indigo and Umber Green, only this time with proportionally more umber. I also added a little titanium white. Because the paint is very thin, I can wipe it down in one movement, which immediately creates the suggestion of a reflection. Ah, the joy of removing the masking tape. In such a hazy world, the horizon is not a hard division. So, I spread the paint, making the horizon fainter, but still visible. I like it. 
I feel like the painting is broadly finished. Now it's just a matter of fine tuning. I'll start with the cloud at the top left. Earlier in the process I've made it lighter, but I think the top could also use some more color. That's why I made a mix of violet gray and transparent white. Violet gray is a beautiful soft purple that works especially well in shadows and glazes. And again, the indigo umber mix. As I said before, for me the bottom left and the top right of this painting are counterparts, whose tonal value is linked. More simply put, because I darkened the bottom left, I have to do the same in the top right. To bring out the left cloud a little more, I lighten the background with a mixture of brilliant yellow and titanium white. By adding a little red, I hope to increase the warm cold contrast with the cloud. I think it's too red, so I remove it again. The same mixture, but this time with less red. That's better. Finally the moment I've been waiting for, painting the silver linings of the clouds with my 002 Kolinsky brush. The blue line between the dune and its reflection is not okay, color-wise. That's why I'm applying a transparent layer of brilliant yellow mixed with a little violet gray, which makes it less of an isolated element. Okay, that's it. I learned a lot from doing this painting. 
I think I will use that Fatalo blue acrylic ground layer more often. <laughs> 